going to be looking today at how firms decide what to make or what to buy. You wouldn't have guessed that from the title, would you? So make or buy decisions. That's what we're going to be talking about. And I hope that what you understand already about supply you will understand that this is a very, very important decision to make. I, I often use the analogy. I often use the analogy of somebody making a cake and trying to make a decent quality cake. And they're going out to buy the ingredients for this cake. And they've got to decide. They've got to decide what to buy and where to buy it from. Because if they buy rubbish ingredients, they're going to end up with a rubbish cake, aren't they? So that is the first thing. I've also spoken at length over the last week or two um, about firms, in order to be competitive, I'm talking about manufacturing firms primarily, but in order to be competitive, in order to be competitive, they've got to understand, first of all, their market, in other words, what their customers want. And they've also got to appreciate that if you're making something quite complicated, like a television set or a computer, you can't make every single part and expect it to be good. Nobody, no company on the planet can do that. They are not experts in everything. It's not possible to do it. So whatever product you think about, whatever the product, you will find that certain components are made in-house and certain components are bought in. And it's that decision about deciding what to make ourselves and what to buy, that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So before I start, I must also tell you about another group of firms that don't really get involved in this. And these are sometimes quite big firms, like Dell Computers, who you've no doubt heard of. And I ask you, I don't expect you to answer, I'll answer it for you, but what do Dell make? The answer is, Dell make nothing. They don't make a single thing. They buy everything. So we've also got other firms that make a lot more parts and components than others. Going back to the car industry, you didn't think it would be long before I went there, did you? You take companies like General Motors, they actually make about 50% of the products themselves. And then at the other stream, you've got companies like Toyota, who make less than 15% themselves. So you have got spectrums here. Some firms make a lot, other firms make nothing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so without more ado, I'm going to get on with this. This is largely taken from chapter three of the book. So uh, if, you look at, if you look at any book on operations management or any book on purchasing, any book on the reading list that I've given you, and look up make or buy, sometimes it's just called make, buy, decision, you will find a huge amount written on this. So today, hopefully, we will understand the fundamental significance of this particular decision to the organisation. But we're most interested in it with respect to supply chain management. That's what we're here to talk about. We also want you to have an understanding of two different approaches to this. Now, this is the theory. This is the theoretical underpinning of the make-by decision. And however firms decide, it's always one or other. Okay? There's no other decision-making process. So everything that's bought by a firm in a supply chain management context is either what we call a transaction cost approach or it's a competency approach. And I don't expect you to know what those terms mean just yet, but by the time we get to the end of this lecture in about 50 minutes, hopefully you will. But keep in mind that there are only two approaches to this. Firms either buy because of this reason or that reason. We'll see what they mean. So, without uh, wasting any more time. Um, how do firms decide what to make and what to buy? Should Ford make their own tyres or buy them from a specialist company like Michelin or Bridgestone or Dunlop? Should UEL buy in IT support or do it itself? 
Should Dell computers make processors or buy them from Intel? Should Apple computers or phones or MP3s? Should Apple design their own products or outsource design? I think we would all agree that Apple are pretty neat at design. How do they make the decision? How do these firms make the decisions that they do? And things can get complicated, can't they, when it comes to things like this? I mean, you thought a car was complicated. These things are even more complicated. I mean, this is a very simple, exploded drawing of a, of a, I don't know what it is, some cheap, cheap, cheap little girl in the front of that. Uh, and here are, here are just some of the firms, here are just some of the firms involved. Just some, just some. So, making the decision, how does Porsche decide what it makes and what it buys? How is that decision made? And remember what I said to you at the beginning, it's either a transaction cost approach or it's what we call a competency approach. Let's first of all look at the case for making it yourself. Why do firms choose to make it themselves? Well, there are basically three different reasons for this. The first reason is to protect or enhance their core skills. If they stop making something, they forget how to do it. Or they lose touch of where that technology is going. So there's that. There is also this issue about core competency, which we're going to return to. This is corporate strategy, I know, but we need to discuss it. I said to you at the beginning that firms can't be expert at everything. I mean, you can't expect Porsche to be brilliant at all these different things. It has to decide what it's going to make and what And its research and development budget will be concentrated on that. It is absolutely pointless for Porsche to try and develop its own tires and spend its limited budget on tires. That isn't the reason people buy Porsche, is it? If they don't like the tires, they can change them. And anyway, there are firms out there that are better at making tires than Porsche. Okay? So, to protect or enhance their core skills and to focus their research budget on what they're good at. There is also this business about risk. About risk. Sometimes firms make something because they can't afford the risk of letting somebody make it for them. Okay? That risk may be safety. When I was at Honda, there was a great debate about braking systems. Could we take the risk of allowing somebody to make the brakes for a Honda? Because if those brakes fail and cause a fatal accident, it could be very damaging. That's one type of risk. The other type of risk is this specific one to supply chain management, which is called holder. It's not a ladies' underwear. It's, it's being held to ransom. If Porsche, for example, well, let's take Boeing. These, these engines here are supplied by Rolls-Royce. Now, this plane is not going to be much good without an engine, is it? So what Rolls-Royce could do if it was disreputable is it could say to Boeing, look, I know you've been buying our engines for the last 10 years, but the price has just gone up 50%. If you don't pay 50% more, you ain't going to get them. And that's been called hell to ransom. Can you see how firms get locked into these things? I mean, those planes use Rolls-Royce engines. They're designed and developed to use Rolls-Royce engines. They can't suddenly go and find another supplier. They're committed to Rolls-Royce. But what Rolls-Royce could do is it could say, you ain't getting them anymore unless you give us a load more money. And we call that being held to ransom. So what making it yourself does is it eliminates that problem. Can you see that? It's safe. Somebody once said, if you want it done properly, do it yourself. It's safer. So there's safety. And then there's self-reliance. And again, this is, this is linked to risk again. Some firms just like to be reliant upon themselves to do these things. This really only applies if you're making pretty simple products. Pretty simple products. And 
you know, what you choose to make is not terribly important to the product. Okay? I worked with a, with a television company once, Sanyo, as it turned out, and they chose, believe it or not, to make their own cardboard boxes because they were fed up with being <coughs> let down by suppliers. And it was cheaper and less risky for them to just go and buy a carton company, a company that made cardboard boxes, and now they can control it themselves. It eliminates the risk. So this is the case for making. Okay? The case for buying, on the other hand, first of all, firms sometimes don't know how to do it. Okay? I mean, I once asked a car manufacturer, Toyota is that I actually said to them, could you make a car? Have you got the skills to make a car all yourself? And they said, you must be joking. We wouldn't know where to begin. No idea at all. It's a completely different technology. We have no idea. So that is one reason for buying something. I mean, take a computer company. Take, take you know, a, a company you know, like Sony. Why does Sony use Intel processors? Well, because they're good. They have a good reputation. You've got that little sticker maybe on your computer that says Intel inside. They don't need to make it themselves, do they? They don't have that skill. That's not their core business. Okay. So they don't have the skill. Maybe they don't have the equipment to make it. And buying that equipment would be expensive. And as I said to you before, it frees up research and development resources. Take Porsche, for example. Porsche may decide to spend their research and development budget on the engine. They don't need to waste their research and development budget on the brakes. They can buy those from an expert. They can concentrate their budget. They can tap into the expertise of another firm. And this is much the same sort of thing. I mean, these days, as I said, computers, the vast majority of computers use processors from, from Intel or, or one of its two or three competitors. And what you can do, I mean, Microsoft is another good example of this. I mean, why don't computer companies develop their own software? The answer is they don't need to. They don't have to. They can buy Microsoft. And they can tap into Microsoft's expertise. Microsoft is an expert at what they do. Another good reason for buying it is that it's cheaper. It's actually cheaper to buy it than make it yourself. Go back to tyres again. Talk about Toyota. How many, if Toyota decided to make its own tyres, how many could it make? Because it probably makes about 5 million cars a year, so that's 20 million times. It's, no, it's not going to sell them to anybody else. So it can only make 20 million. How many times do you think Michelin made? Hundreds of millions. <coughs> so scale economies, okay, it's cheaper <coughs> to buy them than it is to make. Um, and sometimes it just makes good marketing sense. You know, Intel inside. You can get